Hey there guys, it's Silver, your host, and we are back for another part of Jade Cocoon. If I can navigate Levant properly. Okay, we are going back into the Dragonfly Forest to do the rest of the stuff there. Now then. There's something I want to do. There's a certain minion I want to get. And I am hoping we will be able to pick it up along the way. Right. Another turf raid. Shall we use our... We'll just use Mardrag. I want to get past him. Love the little tune we got on the flute now. Alrighty, hit him hard. Yes, well played. Do do do. Very good, very very good. Okay. I'm trying my very best to suppress a sneeze here, but it is. It is getting me. Right, bring him back out. He does all the heavy lifting here against these Earth minions. That is the sound right there of a Cocoon Master coming into his own. Ooh, a tablet. A tablet has fallen onto the flagstones below. Knowledge 4 picked up. It's the earth variety. I really want the air variety. Hold on. I'm just gonna hop back out, refresh the forest, and try and bring the air minions in. Because I really want the other little air type bird minion. Another one spawned back here. Okay. Here we go. Get him. Very good. Nice, nice. Right. Oh, the game froze for a second, huh? That took a minute. Alright. Quick refresh of the forest. Let's see if coming back out and going back in will, um... Change it to another group of minions. Alrighty. Back in we go. Dragonfly key used. <clears throat> Sorry if I sound a bit congested again, guys. It is another early morning recording. You've probably noticed by now the only times I actually have free to record toward the back end of the week are usually early in the morning or late in the evening. Well, Friday, Sat- well, no. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, my schedule is a bit more available. Monday, oh sorry, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, not so much. Right, 
Right, eh? We have the wind minions. Look at the difference in size here. It is quite a vast difference in size. It's like I am little, I am larger. Nice try there, friend. My horn is bigger. Can't beat a larger horn. Right. Wind minions ahoy. Now then. You know what we're gonna do? We'll bring out... We can't bring out Dualco there. There's still not that big a difference in levels, so he's gonna be hit really hard by any physical attacks from that Mardrick. Alrighty. Our big dragon boy. Very nice. Hit him again. By the way, Arpatron will get his time for merging. There are a couple of minions over in the uh, next forest when we get there. That I want to merge him with. And make him even better. Is that still the Earth variation? No, it's not. It is Heralco, the wind version. Okay. Arpatron. We're going to be very gentle here. Magic spells can't crit. So we're going to use these to soften the guy up without killing him. The last thing we want is to accidentally take him out. Okay. Levant. Well, I keep calling him Levant. Silver. Here we go. And capture. Summon the cocoon. We are doing well here. Right. I'm gonna take this cocoon back to Marbu. Goodness me. After we uh, deal with this Mardrig. You guys remember how I said in the in an earlier part that some minions will just come after you regardless, others will be indifferent and others will actively run away from you? I think these Mardregs are definitely one of those minions that will just pursue you indefinitely. Unless it might be a case where when you get to a really high level they start running away. We will see. We will see, my friends. Good stuff. Alrighty. Let us go, my homies. 
I bet there'll probably be another Mardreg up here. I'm, I'm fully assuming there will be at this point. Yep. I am seeing the trend. The trend is here and very easy to spot. We'll try our new minion. Maybe a bit of sleep might um, stop him. He looks pretty cool. He looks pretty cool. Right. How about a claw? Sleep claw. It worked. Nice. Nice, nice. We don't hit very hard, do we? All right. Sleep claw. Go back to sleep. I'm going to defend. He's up again. I'm trying to be very careful. I have a feeling that because Mardregs and Turf Raids are physical attackers, we might not do as well here because we clearly have a magical focus and weaker physical stats. Oh, he's back up. Yep, like that. Oh my god, get out. Withdraw. Withdraw. <laughs> Withdraw. <clears throat> Retreat. Run away. Run away. Big Daddy Mardreg is going to deal with little, little Mardreg. There we go. That made me very nervous. Very nervous. Okay. Let us head back. We shall head back. Go and um, purify this minion. And combine him with our Dualco. Right. So then we can have both the Ur uh, and Earth spells, the accuracy attack, and hopefully, if it doesn't overwrite on another body part, the sleep move as well. Right. Go right. Here we go. Here we are. Doing divine magic is very tiring. Ugh. After performing a purification, I feel so sluggish. Sorry to hear that, Mabu. Okay, perform some Nogi magic. Oh, you got some Firefly. I nearly said again, cocoons, cocoons, silver. It has a C in it, not an F. Firefly cocoons. I'd better purify them. Our enemy we love, and for the tormented we pray. Grant us the beasts of knowledge, the power to touch the spirit. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. I'll keep these here with me. Just tell me when you need them. Alrighty. Let's work some magic. Get our merge on. Dualco. With Hiralco. It further changes our stats. A bit more physical defense, but our magic defense goes down. Okay. Yes. This is what we need. Alright. So we now have both types of Maltese spells. We have Multi, which is singular. Maltese, which is multiple enemy. Full V. And we have both Horn and Fang accuracy and Sleep on Claw. Let's look at the final result. So he goes back to... Looking similarly to how we did before. Okay. 
Steer so yeah, is the same Alco type divine beast, just with a slightly different color palette to represent the, you know, the change between. Was well, a slight sh change in shape to the face and the head, and the color palette is kind of between what Hiralco and Teralco would be. Give me a sec. We'll combine them the other way around. Okay, so you want Hiralco first. Then Dualco next. That's actually much better on our stats across the board. Unless it's exactly the same. Wait there. So 22, 24, 23, 29. 22, 24. 24, 28. Twenty-two, twenty-four, twenty-three, twenty-nine. Yeah, we'll take that. And our form. Still looks the same as he did before. <clears throat> you know what? I think we're going to take his other version. We'll swap him round. Dualco. Here, Alco. Actually, no. I think it's just going to be more advantageous to do it the other way around, isn't it? I'm being very finicky here, as you can see. You know what? We'll take it. We'll take it. It's fine. We will take it. Magical beasts who serve us, merge thy flesh to gain yet greater power. Reveal to us thy heroic form. I still like to keep some of the minions looking at least reasonably pleasing to the eye. Because any veterans that have played this game for a long time will know that successive merging without consideration toward appearance will give you a super strong minion but it just looks like a giant green blob I think we're alright here we go all done for now see you next time well good luck I'll be here waiting marvelous thank you Marbu okay Back to the forest we go. Actually, you know what we're going to do? We're actually going... Give me a second. To head over to the cemetery. I said I'd do this, but haven't done so yet. We're going to speak to the old gravekeeper. Because he always has fun stories to tell about the relationship between man and the forest and divine beasts and whatnot. This game is one of those where it has a lot of interesting story just tucked away into its corners. And it it's more about you, the player, just finding it in your own time. You know, I quite like it here. I wonder if you understand. I have a fine view of the forest. I love the forest. That is why I like it here. When I'm here watching the forest, I need nothing else at all. Oh my, I almost forgot about the frolicking children. Their smiles are important too. Which tale shall I tell? We have two. You know what? I'm going to explain this game's lore to you guys by way of the old man in the cemetery. I mean, four parts in, so possibly a bit delayed, but hey, better late than never. <clears throat> this
This is a tale of the kingdom of Gehenna Pali that stretched across these lands long ago. Once upon a time, Prince Menek, son of King Karis, set out with his vassals to hunt in the forest. But in the forest, they were enveloped by a thick fog, and the prince lost his way. Wandering aimlessly about, he happened upon a marsh from which grew an enormous tree. Thereupon he heard the sound of sobbing, but he knew not from where. He found a maiden sitting all alone. She was weeping by the marsh. I am Alcana. I just buried my mother here in the marsh of Uban, she said. And then she looked up at the prince. He was overwhelmed by her beautiful eyes. The maiden stole his heart that day. It was truly a fateful meeting. Thereafter, the prince made frequent trips into the forest. Undoubtedly, he was paying visits to the maiden. The maiden had a strange power. She could talk to the insects and trees. Before long, there began a terrible rumor that the prince's heart had been stolen by a witch. One day, the maiden spun silk from fairy cocoons and wove it into a beautiful cloth for the king. But the brilliance of that cloth cast a shadow upon the kingdom. The king was so enthralled by the fairy silk that he sent his soldiers into the forest where they ravaged for fairy cocoons. The fairies, still in their cocoons, were boiled alive. The king killed them so he could have their silk. The prince pleaded with his father to stop his cruelty. But the king was no longer the man he had once been. Prince Menek was charged with treason and imprisoned in the king's deepest dungeon. He was never heard from again. When the maiden learned of the prince's death, she cursed her fate and lamented the foolishness of man. She then cast herself away into the marsh where her mother lay. As she started to drown, a voice from nowhere whispered to her, I am Elrum. I shall grant you your wish. Tell me what you want, said the voice. The maiden told Elrum all that weighed upon her heart. The maiden said, Greed bears destructive knowledge. Its wicked power shall be the end of the forest. All hope is lost. The beasts of knowledge shall never live in peace with the forest. The one light of hope who I so loved has perished at the hands of the beasts. I now go to where my love Menek awaits. Thereupon Elrum spoke again. So you claim that your true love was torn asunder by the greed and hatred of the beasts of knowledge? When light is swallowed up by darkness, I shall unleash ruin upon the land, returning all to the nothingness from whence it came. I have a firm grip upon the darkness in your heart. From that day forward, demons appeared in the forest, terrifying all they came upon, and the kingdom of Gehenna Pali fell to ruin by the swarms of Onibubu, locusts of apocalypse. The demons that haunt the forest now are the beasts spawned by the greed in man's heart. Once upon a time, this forest was a paradise for the divine spirits who served Elrim, god of the forest. The forest people are the incarnation of Mamon, the divine spirit of knowledge. When the divine spirits created man, it was Mammon who bestowed knowledge upon them. But man used his knowledge for the pursuit of ruin. In the end, Gehenna Palae was destroyed because man aroused Elrim's wrath. Bestowing knowledge upon man troubled Mammon greatly. 
In order to prevent the mortals from causing further destruction, to this day he lives in the forest, protecting it from the foolish ways of man. If you act not in destructive ways, surely Mammon shall bestow upon you valuable knowledge. We are in good hands with you as our cocoon master. Once upon a time in a faraway village, there lived a woodcutter who... That story about the woodcutter we will save for the next part of the playthrough. Now... You will have noticed, listening to that, that there is a very strong theme between the destructive nature of man and how it impacts upon the wider world. Very, very Studio Ghibli. This game was actually, I think, had a lot of input from a Studio Ghibli writer. I believe I am fairly certain on that one. Just as I am fairly certain our channel member and friend Owl will be watching this right now. He is also an avid Jade Cocoon fan. And I am sure he will probably give me the specifics in the comments as to who it is that had a part in this game. But yeah, basically, man took things too far, became destructive, took advantage of the gifts given to them by a maiden, ravaged the forest and killed countless fairies. And then when the prince that fell in love with that maiden petitioned his father to stop, he was imprisoned and died in the depths of a dungeon, stricken by grief. The maiden cast herself into a marsh to go with to go to her lover and in her final moments spoke to Elrum of man's greed and in return Elrum pretty much used his powers to unleash beasts upon the forest as a symbol of man's greed and keep in mind that prophecy that was mentioned towards the end of the Gravekeeper's first story. The one talking about how should light be swallowed by darkness, I will return all to whence it came. And basically, you know, the land will come to nothing. Keep that in mind. Nice. Very good. Because we are dual elements, we have resistance to both because it's um, balanced in equal measure. I don't know why I just did that. Sorry. Mistake. I should have used the air spell. I will be doing a bit of off-camera merging from time to time as well, or not necessarily off-camera merging, but I will also be doing a bit of beast capture off-camera, because I want to have some merging options open for a later forest, and I want to also have some of these Heralco and Teralco Divine Beasts in reserve, so I can retain the original appearance of this guy here and have him not look like a horrendous monstrosity. Very good. Alrighty, let's push on through. Righty. He's getting... Ow! Getting the first attack on us. Hold on. To it. Probably because we got back attacked, wasn't it? Mardrag. Come on out, my guy. All right. 
lady. Gonna need a mugwort herb there. We've um, we've gotten ourselves a bit hurt. Right. Oh, I have a great walnut here. Mirror of Deva. Special liqueur, that's been saved. Here's hoping for a few more great walnuts as uh, the story goes on. I'd like to get another 20 HP, maybe 30. Okay. Dodge this fella here. Another one there. They are everywhere, folks. Do you walk up? Nice. Multi. Nice, we blocked it. Finish him off. Do do do. Excellent. One sec, I'll be right back. All righty. Let us continue. Uh, I can't be bothered to fight this turf raid. Let us move. Let us go. We're probably going to have to capture a few more minions to um, get some silk as well while we're at it. I think some silk could come in handy. Do you know what? We will. We'll get this turf raid. I have changed my mind. Dualco. Excellent. Okay, my friend. Please don't take him out. Oh, thank goodness. Right. Silver. We have some capturing to do. Let's get him. To the cocoon, my boy. Doo -doo -doo. I enjoy this game so much. There's like, there's no feeling of tediousness when I'm playing this game whatsoever. Like, there have been some pre recorded playthroughs, well, maybe one in particular, where towards the end I was like, God, I just need to get this out of the way. Oh, there's only really ever been one. I won't tell you which one it is, but um, rest assured it wasn't really anything Digimon either. But um, this, it's a pleasure playing it every time. I just wish I had more time to dedicate to playing it consistently because um, goodness me. I might actually do a guide, a, f a series of guides detailing all the minions you can capture in each forest. I might well do that.
depending on how well some of this Jade Cocoon stuff goes, because people seem to respond well to my gaming guides. They really like anything gaming guide that I do. Done. Almost got Silver's capture rate up to level 7. What is this? A tablet rests against a statue of a dragonfly. Magic usage 1. These are all just pretty much telling you how to best employ magic. I assure you I have played this game so many times that I don't need to read those. Right. That's... Open. Lava key. Oh. We have an Alco, buddy. Two of them. Give me a minute. This might be good experience for us. I think I am also going to capture a couple of these. Hmm. Get him. Thankfully, they're not too tough. Um. We'll, um, we'll defend against their attacks a bit longer. They do so little damage, it's almost inconsequential. Okay. Now then. Stay on the defensive. One more, and then we can hit them both again for some good damage. Here we go. Another attack. He's um, definitely weakening a bit here. Silver. Right, capture one of these guys. It saves me having to do this off screen actually, because I want some of these Alcos. These Alco type divine beasts are pretty solid. Let's get the other one. And that didn't do a lot. I'd say we're alright. Right, this should soften him up just a bit. Good. Because of his earth affinity, the equays all won't do much. Gets a double attack because he's faster. Makes sense. Let's get him.
you will notice as well, any of you that have also played Jade Cocoon 2, Jade Cocoon 2 is excellent, by the way, that a lot of the... A lot of the minions that you see in Jade Cocoon 1 were the precursors for some of the specific typings that you saw in Jade Cocoon 2. For example, these bird enemies here that you've seen were like early Alco enemies. They would become Alcos in Jade Cocoon 2. The, um, the Patal Chu and the... Was it the Squoot? No, 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 that was the snake enemy. But yeah, the the punchy enemies. Um, the Chews. They would um, become the Chew type enemies in Jade Cocoon 2. There's a, like a reptilian enemy in a future forest that became... What a nice tune. That became slimy divine beasts. The snake enemies that you saw in Beetle Forest, the uh, Nushub and the Scoot, became the precursor for Gara type enemies. Sorry, as sad as it sounds, I became something of an encyclopedia of uh, Jade Cocoon knowledge when it came to Divine Beasts and Merging. I played these games a lot as a kid. Oh, critical hit. He ain't getting back up. Oh, we're almost at level 8. Right, have we got any, um, any, any tings? Good. Got a bit of Shabla Cure there. We're going to try and get Dualco's level up, so. Get his mana healed. Don't think there's anything in here, is there maybe? I think there's a... No, there's nothing in here. It's like a dead end. Always worth checking, though. Alright. Let's head on back. Here we go. I love this area. It's almost snowy. Looks snowy. Hey, friend. Hey, you're a cocoon master, right? What do you say to a quick little duel? Fine by me, Kikinot. Let's do this. What? You're no fun. Don't you know who I am? Ha! I can't believe it! I am the strongest, most handsome guy in the forest. I go by many names, such as Birdman. I know, look at that dapper beak. After all, I am the legendary man of the Dragonfly Forest. It's hard being so famous. Hashtag dapper beak in chat, please, Call guys. Call me Kiki Nak. Of course, that's only if you can defeat me. Well, that's all for introductions. Here we go. Here we go. The dapper beak. Okay. Not Mardreg. Dualco. Let's see what you've got, birdie boy. Do 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 do. Right. Mm. Even though it doesn't list an affinity for Kikinak, I think he does have a weakness to fire, because you know, Birdman, air affinity. Well, uh, try to get him to sleep. I don't think it'll work. No, he's a boss enemy. Of course it didn't work. Oh, 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 that stings. He's going to be quite tough, I reckon. Yeah, Dualco, you're coming back. We'll work on you a bit more later. Your personal development course still, re still requires completion. Arpatron. Get on out here and do what you do best, son. God. Right. 
Water attack. Oh, he's far less resistant to that. But he's still putting up a decent fight. I'll give him that. Blocked it. Even Arpachon's struggling a bit. One more should do it. Let's stay on the defensive. Alright. Finished. Actually, Volley won't miss. Can we use a Volley? He's still standing. <laughs> oh dear. Oh no. Oh, 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 oh. Finish it. Finish it quickly. Yeah, I might need to clean this disc. What is it with these audio glitches? Yes, Arpatron is level 8. Makes sense, he is our main divine beast. Wow, you are so powerful. I've heard the rumors, but Cocoon Masters really are powerful. Sounds like Lionel Hooks from The Simpsons. So, you're from Cyrus, huh? Hmm. Well, now I've met two. If there's anything I can do for you, just ask me. From now on, we're friends. Come on, ask me something. Ask about the Calabas herb. Calabas? Oh, you mean this powder? My friend Yamu from the Spider Forest gave it to me. The only thing you'll find here in the Dragonfly Forest is sleep spores. If you want some calabash, why not go talk to Yamu? I reckon we can manage that. Yamu and his family are very fond of rare and unusual things. So if you give them something valuable, just maybe... <laughs> but I warn you, they're very greedy and won't share with you so easy. Oh yes, you can have this too. Okay. Without it, you can't get inside. Calabas powder spider key. Come on, ask me something. Ask about the other person. What? You haven't heard of him? Well, that's odd. My young friend was bragging so much. You don't know who it is? His name is Kelmar. He is strong, you know. He's my best friend. What? You're friends with him too? Oh, so it's you. The Cocoon Master he was talking about. Hey! Well now, it's a small world indeed. Kelmar has told me a lot about you. He said, no one is stronger than me, but strength does not make a powerful man. Wise words. Strength alone is no match for what he has. Speaking of which, the power of man is so complicated. I just don't get it. You and me both, Kikinok. What is it with these weird audio glitches at the end of sentences where you've got other voice lines coming in? Yeah, at the end of this part, I'm cleaning this disc. It's either something that's just built into the game itself, or this disc needs to clean. Say goodbye. Leaving already? Well, take this. It's proof of our friendship. All right, Kikinok. Don't worry, you can have it. We'll be able to meet any time you use it. Hey. I'll tell you about myself next time we meet. Well, see you later. We will be coming back here intermittently for a couple of fights with Kikinak because you get good items. That and he's also good XP for training weaker Divine Beasts. The unforgiven, the greedy, and at times like a child. The saga, oh, oh sorry, the sage of the forest. Talk about misreading thing. We have returned. Hello, Garai. <clears throat> well? Did you meet the Birdman? Sure did. What has transpired? Now, you will notice... I'll, I'll mention it in a minute. Calabas powder. So, 
This powder is ground from the leaves of the calabas. We must go report this to the chieftain at once. Fine by me. Although this confirms the existence of the calabas, this is not enough to save the entire village. You have no choice but believe what the Birdman said and venture into the spider forest. Fine by me. And ask about the forest man. There are many types of divine spirits. Know you that some can be quite malicious. Oh dear, not malicious spirits. If we can believe Kikinok, then it is true that the forest man has become the fallen spirit Mamon. As told in Nagi legend, Mamon was an agent of Elrum, who drowned in material greed. This so angered Elrum that he punished Mamon by transforming him into a hideous form. It is said that Mamon was commanded to live the rest of his existence as the keeper of the divine tree. If Kikinok is the divine spirit Amos, who indulged in lust, then... Then Yamu, the forest man, must be the divine spirit Mamon, who indulged in greed. Perhaps there is more about Yamu in the folk tales of Cyrus. The old gravekeeper Poto may know something. Why not ask him about the folk tales? Certainly shall. What has transpired? We'll say goodbye for now. You must go to the spider forest and find Yamu, the forest man. Much treachery lies ahead in the spider forest. Tread carefully. Will do. I love how there's almost like references made to the um the, s the sins of man. One divine beast was transformed into a hideous form for indulging in lust and falling in love with the human woman, breaking a promise to Elrum. Another was overcome by greed and also transformed. Notice now as well how Marbu is wearing different clothes to um, the ones she was wearing before. Like, her dress is now becoming a bit more conservative and her arms are covered. That's because after all the purification, she starts to uh, develop cursed branding and scarring on her skin because of what it does to her body. So she's having to cover up more. Say, what was your father like? Huh? Oh, it's nothing. I was just wondering, that's all. Well, what should we do now? I'm gonna ask her to do some Nogi magic and then we're gonna wind down. Oh, you've got some Firefly Cocoon. Nearly done it again. Firefly cocoons. Why is it so hard to say firefly cocoons? Our enemy we love and for the tormented we pray. Grant us the beast of knowledge, the power to touch the spirit. Marvelous. I'll keep these here with me. Just tell me when you need them. Yes. Right. We'll come back and do some stuff at the beginning of the next part, I reckon. I'm done for now. See you next time. Do you have just a minute? We need to talk. It's hard to talk about it with Garai right here. Let's go outside. Go on ahead. I'll be right out. Okay. Well... We'll be starting the next part with a with a bit of a bonding moment with Mabu, I think. We're going to have a chat. When a woman says you need to talk, especially your wife, brace yourself, guys. Brace yourself. When a, when a long-term partner or a wife says, we need to talk, there's always like that sort of tight feeling in your chest. It's like, oh my god, what have I done? And, uh... I think that's uh, vice versa with uh, any partner in a relationship when one says to the other we need to talk. Yeah, anyway, this is where we're going to wind it down before um, Silver gets a, a lashing from Marbu. No, but it's, it's going to be a deep conversation. 
If you've enjoyed this part, thank you very much for stopping in. I do appreciate all of your fine, fine company and um, and cheer and cheering me on like you do for the for these playthrough parts. If you would like to support the channel in any way, you can do so on our Patreon for just two pounds fifty a month. The same price as a small cup of coffee or a bus ticket, about three dollars. And every silver patron gets an exclusive shout out or an exclusive patron shout out at the end of every live stream and pre-recorded let's play part. A special thank you to Mr. Jonathan, our first patron at the time of this video. You are super awesome and your support is very much appreciated. If you want to become a patron you can do by checking out the link in the video description or the link to the, on the channel's about section. As I was saying, you've all been super awesome. Thank you very much for stopping in and I'll see you in the next one. So guys, I have been Silver, your host. Have a fantastic morning, afternoon or night. And I'll see you again very soon. Take care guys.